Let's try making some air crete out of this mixture. Let's talk about water supply for a second because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but my water supply is disgusting because it's rainwater. There's mosquito larvae and all kinds of fun stuff in there, but you know what there isn't? There isn't 700 parts per million calcium hardness, which is what my tap water is, which is crazy hard if you know anything about it. And that means if I'm making concrete, I either have to soften the water or buy the water or, you know, something like that, or ultimately just use a water supply which has a very high amount of calcium which has a host of potential drawbacks. One of those drawbacks is that calcium is an accelerator for concrete set. And if you use water with a high degree of calcium hardness, it will set concrete quickly, which I'm going to do when I mix my cement and water later. But for making bubbles, really hard water is basically the worst thing that you could possibly use. Everybody pretty much knows this. If you shower with soft water, you go to lather up with the soap, and there's just so many suds and all that stuff, and they don't really rinse off that easily. They kind of sticks around, but with hard water, it's hard to make suds, it's hard to generate them, and they just kind of dissipate quickly. Super not ideal if we're making aircrete. So that's why I'm using rainwater to generate my suds, but I'm using tap water with a high level of calcium hardness in my cement water mixture so that I'm going to have, hopefully, a pretty fast set time uh, for my mix whilst still being able to generate pretty good dense shaving cream like foam Okay, so to this we're going to add a little bit of this vegetable glycerin product Not all that much And again just Let's try making some air crete out of this mixture when you go to make air crete, you better be ready to make a mess. Based on my experience, every time I do this, it is a pretty big cleanup effort afterwards. Okay, so now I'm ready to apply some air and we can start trying to generate some shaving cream like foam with my homemade foam generator cannon. Let's get started. Before I make this air crete though, you know what I need to do? I need to mix the cement and water together. I don't want the, air, the bubbles sitting around. I want to make them and I want to get them in the mix and I want to place them immediately. It's just as fast as I can make that happen. And another benefit is I go ahead and I mix my cement and water a little bit early. Go ahead and let that hydration start happening. Give it some time to, you know, to start the process so that by the time I get the foam generated, get it all well integrated into the mix, that you know, cement and water's had a little bit of time to kind of get started and again, hopefully, we can get a, a fast initial set time on this air creep product so it doesn't, you know, we don't lose all our bubbles and whatever we're making is broken. That one was a little bit overfull. I'm, I'm aiming for 3.8 liters ideally. Now let's go find out how much cement we have to mix with that. Pretty sticky, goopy mix, but I think it's a good starting point. I weighed that bag before I started. That was 22 and a half pounds of Portland cement to 3.8 liters of water. Okay, so let's start making some soap suds here. We're not going for high pressure. That's not that's not the goal here. Not that one.
3.4 pounds. 3.4 pounds for approximately a five gallon bucket of this foam. I would have preferred a denser consistency. I didn't, don't think I got exactly what I was looking for. But as I said, this stuff's a little bit finicky to work with. Sometimes you gotta work through the kinks. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to add all of the cement that I made to all of the foam that I made. What will vary here is the finished density of the product and how strong it will be. So, you know, I gave you all the measurements all along that I used, so hopefully this is enough to kind of zero you, zero you in on some numbers that give you a starting point for trying this at home if you want to try it for yourself. So I'm just going to try to mix all this in and then we'll get it placed into a form. And this is what it starts to look like here. I mean, it's just early yet, but it gives you an idea. Pretty neat looking stuff. Let's weigh it up. 19 pounds. Let's get rid of all this stuff and get a form up here before I lose all my bubbles. Before I lose all my bubbles. This is a 12 by 12 mold. Uh, it's waxed so that, you know, the, the wood has a little bit of protection from the moisture. It's just a simple form, but let's go ahead and throw some of this aircrete in here and see how it does. You don't so much trowel it as you negotiate it flat. I don't even want to screed it fully because I know it's going to settle just a little. We'll call it at that. And we'll just see what happens. This will set up or it, or it won't. And either way, I'm going to show you what happens. Let's add some glass fibers and a little red color to this one. Not going for perfect, I just want one that's going to make it to the demolding process. And if I can get that, well, I'm pretty happy with that. We'll check back later and see how that stuff turned out. I'm thinking it's, it's going to have turned out really well. And I'm excited about seeing the, uh, the version which had the pigmentation in it. I put uh, alkali resistant glass fibers in it, not fiberglass. And a good amount of them at that. And they seem to disperse well. Sometimes they get hung up on the whip of the drill. They didn't seem to. I saw a lot of them in the mix. The mix seemed to be a little bit less inclined to have larger voids to it. The initial one seemed, for whatever reason, to retain a lot of those uh, larger voids. The second one seemed to have a tighter consolidation, so I'll be interested to see how it turned out, see what we got out of it. <laughs> 